we'll move to uh, sanjana uh, sanjana singh is from the center for sustainability environment and climate change at flame university uh, and uh, she is going to talk about uh, advancing environmental science as a public good thank you so much for the introduction so i will just quickly go through some of the work that we are doing at the center while focusing on one of the main projects which i think will add to today's discussion so uh, the center for sustainability environment and climate change at flame university is relatively new it's at its nascent stage it started last year and we have uh, so far worked on two major projects so i will just talk about uh, the two uh, main labs that we have at the center so one is the map lab and the other one is the future ed lab so in the map lab we are currently focusing on what we call the historical gis so we are mapping uh, urban sprawl and changes in uh, green environment and um, especially around uh, protected areas for the from the last 150 years to whenever the data is available so this is when the maps of uh, the historical maps are actually made available so there are some uh, uh, like there are some cities which have been mapped in extreme detail and some which have been completely neglected and uh, we are also like we are constricted sort of limited by that uh, by the mapping of those cities so right now that's uh, what we are focusing on and in that what we are trying to do is one is the technical aspect where we are trying to uh, geo reference uh, some important points to check how uh, the urban sprawl or protected areas have uh, changed over time and the other is mapping it to historical events and uh, seeing how if they have recur recurred so for example one of our main projects right now is concentrated on hyderabad and uh, this is from uh, 1896 is when we have the uh, oldest data and we've mapped it to 2020 and it's very interesting because uh, around that time around 1890s uh, is when the spanish plague was ongoing in hyderabad and it sort of perfectly times up and it went on till 1920 or at least we have record or data till 1920 and it perfectly times up with the pandemic that we had in 2020 and what's very interesting is that in maps there are certain areas uh, open zones which were designated as plague camps and those similar areas were uh, in 2020 uh, for the rehabilitation and for the uh, like epidemic centers for uh, the covid-19 pandemic so these are some very interesting parallels that we are working on and this is still like a work in progress uh, because again it's relatively new but that is uh, something that we've been doing and uh, the other thing is like while we are mapping this at a technical level we are also trying to get histories from people trying to understand uh what people who have lived through the era or people who have lived in the areas which are designed on the map what they have experienced over the years and what the history of say a region or a household or how a road has changed over time uh so i am just going to quickly go through some of uh the historical gis project uh images so this is uh, the area of study that i was talking about in hyderabad and uh this is the level of detail that we are getting uh which is uh like we have individual house levels i don't know if it is visible here but we can actually have like individual camp and uh individual uh, roads mapped out and when we are geo referencing it to the time so one of the ways that we uh make sure that uh to check how the uh city has changed is to map uh roads so the roads which were created 100 150 years ago are almost exactly the same as the roads that we use today as mostly national highways and the main roads they have barely changed uh from the uh you know british india time to the current time so that's one way to uh, map exactly to check uh, how much of the area has changed and how accurate the data source is and also seeing how much a uh, road deviates uh you can tell how much uh, uh like the accuracy of the map so that's like one thing the one way we are uh, confirming that so this is one of our um, very focused areas so it's the lingampalli kheratabad area in hyderabad and for which uh, for this we have very detailed uh, i don't know if you can see in this but i will show you so this is 
this is the 1915 uh, map that we have. This is from the physical map that we have already georeferenced, and that is the 2021 satellite image imagery map. So uh, it's of the same region, and if you can see some of the main uh, roads and regions have remained same, but uh, the grey line here is the railway station, which has sort of like changed some of this uh, green, which some of this is agricultural and the other is just a green wasteland. So that has been replaced. Um, so this is uh, one of the regions that we have uh, sort of taken a step further. And rather than just having it uh, mapped and georeferenced, we're also creating a 3D model to show exactly what it may have looked like. So this is again, from references uh, by studying the archaeological material used at that time. So to see what sort of like construction and bricks were used to sort of make a 3D structure. But this is not, uh, this is to scale, but it is, uh, it may have little differences in the terms of how the architecture actually looked. Uh, but this is the main reason of putting it in 3D mapping is to uh, make it easier for students to walk through a city. So like, you know how you have Google, in Google Maps, you have like walk through your neighborhood. Uh, which sort of makes it very interesting for students to interact with uh, what's in the neighborhood or what's in the uh, location and to understand how things have changed. So we have sort of chosen uh, this model for that. So like we're creating a 3D model and then we'll uh, take this to classrooms uh, and have students interact with it to see how it has changed over time uh, and over a hundred year uh, span. So I will just uh, quickly move on to our main, uh, one of the main projects that we're working on, which is a part of the Future Ed Lab. It's called, uh, the project is called Tropic Zoo, and it was initially a part, it was hosted uh, here at ISA. And this is where it started in 2017, where we worked on uh, creating uh, some repositories of open source uh, resources on climate change, but trying to map it to every discipline. So climate change, not just mapped to the sciences, but also to the humanities and the social sciences. And uh, it has come a long way and it has changed a few hands. So right now it's at flame, but uh, the project is currently focusing on uh, expanding into the humanities and the social sciences. And what we are trying to do is get uh, climate change uh, as a topic available in all disciplines without having to change the curriculum or without having to work away or create a new curriculum. So working with the current cur curriculum as it is. So uh, with India, we're trying to map it to the uh, UGCS for the universities and we are trying to map it to NCRT uh, uh, syllabus in schools. Uh, we are right now focusing on high schools and uh, undergrads, uh, but we would love to take it to middle and primary schools. Uh, one of the great things about this project is most of its resources are uh, sourced by teachers. So we have workshops where we do teacher training programs where we try to, uh, we, we use some of the scientific resources to tell them, oh, this is how you can include climate change in your humanities or your history classroom or say your uh, geography classroom. And then we ask them to give us an example of what they are already teaching and how they see that you know climate change can be mapped to what they are teaching. And then ask them to write a lesson plan on that, which we publish on our website. So Tropics Who has a website which uh, has been there and which sort of we keep, uh, the repository keeps growing and we uh, try to add more local resources where teachers are giving examples from their classrooms of what they teach and how they teach and how they can include uh, climate change into it. So right now we have 10 disciplines. Uh, I've just briefly uh, listed the disciplines and I'm just going to give you an example uh, of what key topics uh, we are focusing on in every discipline. So for example, if we are looking at biological sciences, then we'll be looking at uh, some of it would be from uh, the virology aspect, some of it would be the, from the botany aspect, some of it would be basic biodiversity or evolutionary aspect. Um, this is... I'm just going to quickly go through it, but uh, these are some examples that we have of lesson plans, which includes uh, different interests and uh, everything from current topic to topics of uh, which are like directly affected by climate change. Um, and we have divided them into two types. So there are lesson plans, which is your entire 60 minute to 90 minute uh, lecture, or you have teaching tools, which are anywhere from like, you know, two to 20 minute uh, 
material available which you can then adapt for your own requirements this is another example from uh, so social sciences so we've adapted it to either sociology ir psychology uh, classrooms and how teachers can use it uh, in those aspects again uh, these are some examples i'm sorry i'm really quickly going to go over them so one of the main things that we're doing is uh, we're continuing a teacher training program and this sort of like it's a cycle which feeds into itself because we go for these uh, workshops and we train teachers on how to uh, how we think that climate change can be used in their classroom and then we ask them to tell us how they will use climate change in their classroom so this way the repository grows and uh, they sort of add the wealth of knowledge that they have from years of teaching um so these are just some of the places that we've conducted workshops over the years um and yeah i think that's about it yeah we can take questions thanks anjana we have time for uh, a few questions so sanjana i was really interested in this aspect of how while doing teacher training you also are able to get teachers to provide um inputs and maybe training material mm -hmm. um in my experience of working limited experience of working with teachers is that there are lots of constraints including the time uh, they are overloaded mm -hmm. um so what has your experience been in the sense i understand that teachers are really keen on these subjects because they fall short mm -hmm. and they feel the need at a personal level but sometimes institutional arrangements make it difficult for them to engage so some insights there would be helpful So I think one of the main uh, drawbacks that even or challenges that we've also come across is that they keep talking about how they have a curriculum to stick to and this is irrespective of which city which country we've held uh, the workshops that they have a curriculum that they have to stick to they have a requirement in terms of like um you know workload assignments uh, exams that they have to do and if climate change is not a natural part of their teaching or their curriculum then it seems like it's a lot more work to add on to the curriculum so instead what we try to uh, tell them is that instead of looking at it as a silo because you generally tend to think oh this is a new topic that i need to add on into my curriculum we take examples from their curriculum so we ask them to tell us where like you know what exactly they teach where are the challenges and uh, we try to look at our repository of resources in that particular field and try to find if there is something that's already been done or written on it in some other context in some other cultural setting and how they can sort of use that in their own classroom without having to go against any of these things so yes it is a little extra time that they have to put in but at least it's not like a different curriculum that they have to follow or they don't have to create a new resource but what they can do is just use a resource like see see a resource and adapt it to their work sort of related to this question you asked there is a website called maths for sustainability so essentially you are not teaching sustainability as a different uh, topic but you have to set problems in maths you use concepts in sustainability to set those problems so uh, that's that's the way you try to integrate it basically thank you uh, i just want to add in this uh, because from next year we are going to implement nep so this will help you a lot means uh, this question will not remain because uh, you can reach to the uh, all institute schools and uh, they can freely implement this yeah sorry I'm Komal Savant. I'm professor in Wadia College. Thank you. Uh, if there are no other questions, thanks, Anjali.